Number one, woken up. I have three kids, and they are of varying ages. My oldest is about to go to college. And it reminded me of a terrifying experience our family had, and she was very young. It happened 12 years ago, and I hadn't thought about it in quite a while. But she's a little apprehensive about going off to college. That made me think of it for the first time in ages. So this happened during the early summer, when my daughter was six years old. She had always had a problem with thunderstorms before too. So on this day, when the storm was brewing for hours before her bedtime, I was not expecting it to be a very peaceful night. When I put her to bed, she was already pretty apprehensive about the storms. But we didn't want her to grow up and always be scared of storms. So we didn't change her bedtime or sleeping situation based on the storming. I did stay with her a little while in order to rest her nerves and assure her that nothing bad was going to happen. But still, we did expect her to be able to sleep on her own rather than hunker in with us all night. The storm was actually not even as bad as some that we'd had in the past. So I didn't think it would be that much of a problem. My husband and I were getting ready for bed. This was probably a good hour and a half after I had left my daughter's room. My assumption was that she was sound asleep at that point. But then, there was a very bright flash of lightning, followed by a really loud pop of thunder that startled the both of us. I remember it pretty vividly, even now over ten years later. It was immediately followed by another similar but very less intense flash. And it was after the second flash that I heard my daughter crying out to us. I figured she must have been asleep, awoken by the first thunder and scared by the second one. I got up to make my way into her room to check on her. My husband, though, told me to stay there. He was going to go in and check on her for me. He got up and left. As I continued to get ready for bed, I noticed that he was gone for quite a bit of time, actually. I finished getting ready for bed and actually had gotten into bed before he eventually came back. When I asked what took him so long, he told me that she was really scared. She had been asleep, awoken by the thunder, but during the second flash, he thought that she had seen someone standing outside her bedroom window. That is what caused her to scream. My husband had to calm her down from that, and then go and check and make sure that there was no one outside. He wasn't able to find anyone, and he was pretty sure that she had just woken up so quickly that she had probably dreamed it. But he was pretty thorough checking for her, and then he was able to calm her down in order to get her back to sleep. Thankfully, though, he was able to do that. It may have been about 15 minutes later, though, when we heard her begin screaming again. Again, my husband told me that he would go in and check on it, although I really wanted to at that moment, but I let him do it. I mean, if there really was someone outside of the house, he would have been better to deal with it than I would. He was, and still is, a very big and strong man. Like the first time he was gone for a while, it worried me a bit more this time, because this time, I knew why she had been screaming the first time. I figured she either saw something, or thought that she saw something. So I was worried about what might be happening that I couldn't see. Now this time, after a good 20 minutes, he returned to the room with our daughter. Apparently she had thought she saw someone outside her window yet again. So even though my husband checked and did not find anyone, she was so scared that he thought it was best to just let her sleep with us. At that point, I absolutely agreed. I didn't know what she saw or thought she saw, but it had obviously scared the crap out of her. We all got into bed and surprisingly fell asleep rather quickly, which was a blessing. Something woke us all up maybe about an hour later, but it wasn't the thunder or lightning that did it. It was sirens and lights. I stayed in the room with my daughter while my husband went to check it out. He was gone even longer this time than he had been both times before. I turned on the television in our room 
to try and get our daughter's mind off what was going on. Eventually, my husband came back, and when he did, he told me about what had happened. It was chilling in several different ways. There was a man outside, and he had broken into our neighbor's house. Now, our neighbors weren't home, but they had a silent alarm system in their house, and that, of course, summoned the police. Now, although we didn't know this exactly, it was quite reasonable to assume that my daughter had actually seen someone outside of her window, and that it was likely the same person who broke into our neighbor's house. If it wasn't for my daughter catching him at her window two times, who knows if he would have broken into our house or not. Number two, the outage. This isn't a really long story, but it is definitely a creepy one. It happened to me in my first apartment after graduating from college. I didn't get a great job right away, which I guess isn't too much of a surprise. So I ended up in an efficiency apartment in Chicago for a while. It was actually a nice little place, now that I'm thinking about it again. A nice and warm little one room on the fifth floor of a building in Lincoln Park, close to the lake. I was a bit surprised because it seemed like this was the sort of place that, despite its size, it would still cost a bit of money, but I was able to afford it. This was around 2001. I had been in that apartment for close to a year at the time, and this was happening in late spring. I was still young enough at the time that I enjoyed spending my weekends at the clubs, but this night I decided to remain in. There were supposed to be some bad storms moving in, and I absolutely was not that much of a fan of getting wet. Although, this was in the days when AOL was still a thing. It feels weird to bring that up. It also makes me wonder if it's still a thing in any way. I guess I'll have to check on that later. Anyhow, I was browsing through some chat rooms. I heard my cat meowing. I realized that she was out of food and I went to feed her. This is a little important because she doesn't tend to meow unless she's out of food. So I always know automatically when she meows what she wants. As I got up to feed her, there was a sudden huge flash of lightning. A few moments later, this was followed by a huge crack of thunder that nearly shook the building. It was only moments after that that I also began hearing the rain begin pouring. And it began pouring really, really hard and loud. By the time I made it back to my computer, the storm was in full force. The lightning and thunder was coming almost on top of itself over and over and the wind was howling pretty loudly. I was sitting at my PC for probably another half hour, just listening to the storm and watching the light show. I think I was actually chatting with someone online in an instant message. And that was when the lightning flashed and was immediately followed by a huge flash of orange light and what sounded like an explosion out in the street. I jumped, not only from the explosion sound, but also because the electricity went out. And not only did it go out in my apartment, it looked like it went off outside as well. My apartment was completely dark and there was no light coming in from the outside. My computer was a desktop that also had gone out. I could never have imagined it being so dark in the city like that. When the power didn't come on right away, I realized it might be a while before it did. I did have a cell phone at the time, but this was so long before smartphones. It had a green LCD screen that didn't let off too much light, so I realized that I would probably be in the dark without much to do for a while. After about 30 or so minutes, I heard my cat begin meowing. This was weird because I had given her a full bowl of food. I knew that there was no way that she had eaten all the food that I had given her. I made my way over to her bowl in the dark. I was able to verify that indeed the food bowl still had plenty of food in it. So I had to think about what it was that was making her meow. I was able to make her out a little bit in the dark. She was on the kitchen counter. 
She was still meowing, and her meow descended into a low growl, and then a hiss. My kitty was quite docile, and I hadn't heard her do something like that before, so I was really worried, and wondered if a rat or something had gotten into the house. Then, there was something else that I saw in front of her. I couldn't make it out, though. It was like some sort of dark thing, and I first thought it was just my perception, making images in the dark. As I was trying to make it out, suddenly the lights came right back on. My cat was on the counter and growling still, and there was some strange, dark figure standing right in front of her. It sort of had form, but not completely, and I had no idea what it was or where it had come from. I was standing right in front of my bed. Remember, this was a small one-room apartment, and I felt my legs give out. I involuntarily sat down on the bed in complete shock but as quickly as the thing was there, then it was gone. My cat jumped off the counter, ran over to the bed, and jumped in my lap. She immediately started purring as I began petting her, confused as to what I had just seen. I never knew what it was. I never saw it again, even though I remained in that little apartment for another year. I also never heard my cat growl like that again. I mean, if it hadn't been for her growling, I may have just wrote it off to my imagination, but that strange reaction showed that she had seen whatever it was, also. Number 3. The Building I once had an experience that was reminiscent of a scene from a horror movie. It happened on a day that I had gotten up and noticed how dark it was outside during the day. I was on summer vacation from school, and it had been a pretty hot summer up to that point. When I looked outside, I saw how the sky was overcast with green and black clouds. They were moving quickly across the sky. I was elated. This was the kind of weather that I always enjoyed the most. I was always looking for some sort of adventure or something different to do, and I especially liked to search out potentially scary things to do. I decided that I was going to go and check out this old empty building outside of my neighborhood. I really didn't know what it was. I think it was a really old school or something. But it had been abandoned and locked up for as long as I had been alive. But although a lot of high school kids were known to use it as a place to get high, I wasn't one of them and had never been in there before. I was looking for an atmospheric experience, which I thought that an abandoned and boarded up building would have during a nasty thunderstorm. And not only that, but I also figured maybe I would get lucky and find some pot or something that some of the other kids had hidden there. All in all, it would have made into a very interesting day for me. I set out to the old building. I didn't really worry about getting caught out in the storm or anything. Being wet didn't bother me. But not only that, it also didn't seem like the rain was going to come anytime soon. I'm not sure how to explain it, but sometimes you can tell when the storm is just setting in. A lot of brush and stuff grew up around the building in the time that it had been abandoned. I got into the place rather easily. It was daytime, so I really didn't expect to run into anyone at all. The darkness and shadows were pretty cool. There was plenty of drawing and writing on the walls and on the floor. There were tons of empty beer cans, beer bottles, and other liquor bottles, with all sorts of other garbage around too. It began raining hard while I was in the building. The storm was pretty fierce with some constant thunderbolts. It was really coming down. It was really something else to experience. I didn't find anything like hidden pot or such. That was definitely a disappointment, but not overly so. I was still interested in the atmosphere, and just looking around, seeing what I could find. When I got to one of the stairwells, I was planning on making my way into the basement. The staircases were all doored off, so to get to them, I had to get myself through those thick doors. When I pushed on the handle of the door, I was about to open it when I noticed something through the small window in the door. There was someone on one of the staircases 
he was walking up the stairs from the basement, I immediately let go of the door handle. I didn't know what to expect. I mean, it could have just been another teenager like me exploring. But in the heat of the moment, I didn't really want to wait and find out. Turning, I ran across the hallway and into a room that was across from the staircase. I pushed the door to without latching it. I then peeked out the corner of the door, through the space between the door and the door frame. I got in there pretty quickly before the guy had emerged up the stairs. After a short time, I finally saw a figure appear in the window. It seemed to take him a lot more time than it should have to get there. It was when he opened the door that I realized that he was pulling something along with him. It was when he pulled it through the door that I really got terrified as it looked like a body bag. I was very lucky that I didn't make any sound when I saw it. I wanted to pull away from the opening of the door, but I couldn't. Although I was looking for some sort of adventure this day, this was not what I wanted. A loud thunderbolt nearly ruined my chance at trying to stay quiet, but I was able to be quiet. He had been pulling the bag with him, but after getting through the door, the large man heaved it up onto his shoulder and he began walking down the hallway. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what the guy had in that bag. I had no idea where he was going or what time he would get back. So I tried to be still and waited as long as I could. The storm continued and I waited. I kept checking my watch, looking to see how long I was there. I kept delaying coming out of the room because I kept feeling that I would pick the wrong moment and come out and get caught. After a while though, I realized I couldn't remain in there forever, so I slowly crept out of the room. There was no one in the hallway that I could see. I walked over to the stairwell and looked in there. There was no one in there. That is when the thought hit me. I wondered if I should go down into the basement and check it out and see what was going on down there. I really almost tried to do it, even had my hand on the door handle. But for some reason, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I'd seen way too many scary movies where someone does something stupid, so I didn't want to do that. I mean, anything stupider than going into that building to begin with. I decided to just leave. I crept over the way I got in and left the building. Walking out of the forested area was creepy as hell. I didn't even care that I quickly got soaking wet. I was more worried that whomever that guy was, he was going to find me and do something to me. I managed to get out of the area and get home while it was still storming. I called in anonymously to the police to report seeing something in that building. I don't know if they actually checked it or not, or if they thought I was pulling a prank. I know that the building continued to be a hangout for children to get drunk or high, but I never went back there. I never figured out what I'd seen that day. Hey y'all, Kill the Orange Cat here. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Kill the Orange Cat, please feel free to click the subscribe button and bell below, or click the icon of Ichigo the Cat that will appear at the end of this closing. Leave me a comment and share this video with someone you think might enjoy it. If you have an original story you'd like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please email it to the address included in the description. But most importantly, don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed because you never know where a Killer Orange Cat might be hiding. Good night.